got the fan on because it's so freaking hot. And I suppose having this light on probably doesn't help any. <laughs> but, oh well. It's alright. Uh, I was going to show you guys, uh, well, first of all, well, hello. Hello. Yes, just me again, your your humble servant, your, your, uh, uh, your mastermind of ceremonies, so to speak. It is I, Frankie Slauson. And, uh, yeah, welcome to another video. I'm by myself. Mom and Dad are gone. They went to a Loretta Lynn concert uh, in Thief River Falls, which is only like 45 miles away from here. And so they're gone enjoying that. So it's Saturday night, and I got to house myself, and I pretty much can do whatever the heck I want, you know, pretty much, uh, besides burn the place down, but I would never do that anyway. Why would you want to do that? Um... I just recently watched, well, I watched a, a few films here this week, but this is one in particular uh, that I watched that I, that I really enjoyed probably the most. Anybody remember that's this one at all? Does that look familiar? Cloak and Dagger is what it was called, for any of you guys who remember that film. Uh, I watched it because I... Uh, I was watching a little bit of E.T. because I ordered some E.T. Uh, online, like an E.T. 30th anniversary uh, figurine that I'll show you guys when I get it. It should be here probably by Monday, probably. And I'll show you in another in another video of it. Uh, I was just kind of looking around for some movies with the, that little kid, you know, well, who was the little kid at the time, anyway. Uh, his name's Henry Thomas, and he was, uh, well, he used to be on, uh, on E.T., well, he was on E.T., that's where he got his big role on E.T. They did a few f films. I don't remember everything that he did back in the 80s, but I, I saw Cloak and Dagger. Actually, I was looking at I was going to buy it, but then I, I, uh, I uh, seen it, uh, well, I seen it online, you know. We'll say I seen it on Netflix, anyway. And, uh, yeah, so, pretty interesting, anyway. It was, uh... A very good movie, uh, your typical 80s film that I love because it's it's more originality than just special effects, you know. Sometimes a person gets sick of uh, special effects sometimes. Not always. I mean, not, not always do I get sick of special effects, but once in a blue moon I do. But this had a really good originality. Storyline was good. Uh, you know, I, I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's definitely something that I would definitely purchase in the, in the near future, anyway. But, uh, I wanted to, uh, thank everybody for looking at the last video that I posted. And, uh, today, what I want to do is what I was mentioning about earlier, uh, or earlier in the week on Monday when I made my video. Uh, but, but what I want to do today is do a t-shirt video. And you're like, you probably like, a t-shirt video? What, what are you talking about, Frankie? A t-shirt video? Why would you want to show your t-shirts? Now, see, this is the thing about me. And, and this is what one what, of what my habits as of late uh, for a guy who really doesn't do much in editing or who, who uh, whose videos aren't as fancy as some people, so to speak, as I've heard in the comments. Anyway, I won't let that bother me. I'm just going to move on and continue. Anyway. I recently have gotten the habits of collecting, well, a lot of things, whether it be DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, figurines, uh, you know, anything, you know, posters or whatever. But the one thing that I've started to love now is collecting, you know, cool t-shirts. And I'm not just talking any type of t-shirt. I'm talking the good t-shirts, the fun shirts, the shirts that say that, say that you're something, okay, that, that express you as a person and, and, and show what type of personality you have. You know, you could be a clean-cut guy, wear a nice shirt, whatever, and, you know, all dressy and fancy. Or you could be kind of the laid-back guy, which is, you know, what I like to consider myself as. And go get yourself a Mr. Rogers uh, shirt <laughs> that says, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, you got it for 20 bucks on Amazon.com. It only took four days to arrive. <laughs> yes, I've gotten a few questions about this shirt, but you know what? I think, uh... If I'm not mistaken, I believe Robbie Webster has the exact same shirt. It's not the same shirt, but the exact same design anyway. If I'm not mistaken, in one of his videos, I believe he was wearing a shirt that said it was exactly the same. I guess, Robbie, you'll have to let me know if I'm right or not. Uh, 
And you know, you, you guys saw the other day, I was wearing the, uh, one of the two, uh, or one of the three Shea Carl shirts that I have. But I'm going to whip out here. I'm going to pop this out here. Hopefully you guys can see everything perfect here. But in here, I mean, you see a few dress shirts and whatnot. But I have a collection of other random shirts that, you know, that kind of express how I am as a person. And, you know, you never see really anybody do t-shirt videos at all, uh, or t-shirt updates or whatever, but I, you know, if this thing, this could be the next thing that could take off, you know. You know, as we know, DVD updates and Blu-ray updates are, have already been done way over than it needs, way more than it probably should have been. But, how often do you see somebody uh, do a t-shirt update? <laughs> but, I know the only person that I've ever seen that has done that, is uh, Ethan Phillips, you know, aka Dweebo1234. And yeah, that's a shout out to you if you still watch my videos at all. I, I don't know if you do or not because I know that your brother Sean took me off his list or whatever of favorites, so I don't know if you guys still watch my stuff or not. But if you do, I guess I'll find out in a future video. Anyway, so I want to show you guys some of my t shirts here that you guys see me wear on occasion, but I've never really shown kind of, well, that my guess, but one of these shirts here, I'll just show you here. I guess my America shirt, my USA shirt. Hopefully, the, hopefully the lighting's not too bad, but that's yeah, a uh, America T-shirt for USA. Have some USA pride. The second one here, if you guys know the movie Adventureland. This is my games T-shirt. A little wrinkly, but oh well. I don't own an iron. It's from Adventureland. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. This is the Shea Carl shirt. One of the first ones that I got. It says, if life is worth living, then it's worth recording. And I agree with that so much. I love this shirt. When I remember when Shea Carl put on his Facebook page back in the... Probably about a year or so ago. About a possible shirt design like this. Uh, when I got this from... Uh, what was it from? RodeoArcade.com. It was from uh, District Lions. It was like twenty-eight dollars, but it was it was worth it. I like the old style camera. Now, obviously, they they were more advanced today than we were yesterday. This one is one of uh, of two of Ghostbuster shirts that I own. The other Shea Carl shirts are in the wash right now. And uh, yeah, but <laughs> I'm trying to do the best I can here and try to show you everything on the cool design. My Ghostbusters shirt that I've had for a long time, I got it from an old friend for, for like, I believe, a Christmas present, I think. Uh, hello, my old friend from uh, the early days, Mr. Darren Fish, who I wish, I, I wish we still hung out. Anyway, this is my Michael J. Fox limited edition Back to the Future shirt that I wore a few times. You know, pretty cool, I think, you know. Now here's a shirt that should take you guys back, you know. I got a couple of those type of shirts. I got, uh, this is a DX, Degeneration X t-shirt. Doesn't have anything in the back, I don't think, nope. But I think this glows in the dark, I believe. Yeah. Okay, this is my second Ghostbuster t-shirt. With the original logo on there. I think I got that from Walmart, I believe. Let's see. Oh, here's a shirt here. The classic NWO shirt. How many of you guys on YouTube still own an NWO t-shirt? I bet you there's not that many. You know. But did you know this? Here's here's a fact for you. If For all you diehard wrestling fans out there, if you ever pay attention to, you know, whether it be WWE, Monday Night Raw, or Friday Night Smackdown, or even possibly uh, TNA Impact, uh, pay close attention to what the audience is wearing because more likely 9 times out of 10 or even 10 times out of 10 in every event since the NWO first started pretty much every time I've watched Raw since then and I pay more attention to it now that everything's in high definition and we got HDTV and all that uh, that just about every time you'll see a fan or, or a couple fans wear an N, either an NWO shirt or some type of NWO shirt, whether it be the Wolf Pack, whether it be the NWO Hollywood, or the original white and black, uh, or even the LWO, the Latino World Order, or the BWO, the Blue World Order. 
you will see somebody more likely wear something NWO related uh, at every time you watch Monday Night Raw. Pretty much. Which goes to show that the faction should have should stayed together, you know, rather than disband. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, back to the shirts here. It's my General Lee shirt. I haven't worn that. Uh, I really haven't worn that much, but I, I should. You know, Dukes of Hazard shirt. Some Duke boys. Some Duke boys. Uh. Okay, and my Goonies shirt that you guys have seen and uh, can see me wearing this, especially in my in the Road Back to Astoria, Oregon documentary movie, which was officially released, you know, a couple months ago. In case you guys want to check that out. Or you can check out my Facebook page and I have all my photos from there, from that event. This is my... Monday Night Raw t-shirt that I got from my other from my friend Darren as well, I believe. I believe he, yeah, I think he gave me this one of the Ghostbuster one, I believe. Got it from Target, Grand Forks. And I still got it, still fits. Still fits after all this time. Another Ghostbuster one that I have, I think my last Ghostbuster one, I believe. The one that uh, MJ Kelly also owns. Same shirt. <laughs> okay. Before my arm gets tired here. Okay, we're getting down to the wire here. Okay. And this is another Goonie shirt that I own. That I got in Astoria, Oregon at the Chamber of Commerce. Which is cool because this actually has a backside. Most of my shirts don't have a backside, but these, this one does. The Goonies. It all starts here. Astoria, Oregon. <laughs> I bought this back in 2008, and it still fits. Hasn't shrunk too much. And this is the one that I also bought in Astoria, Oregon, from this last trip. The Goonies. It was only $18. Never say die. Very nice shirt. And so sort of here, Tom and Jerry shirt. Pretty cool. Like that one. I haven't worn that one in a while. Should start wearing some of these here. I think. Okay, I got one more. My Ninja Turtle shirt. That I bought at Walmart for like seven dollars. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I love when they go tagless, when they print their own logo. I like that. Some shirts I got aren't tagless, and it kind of drives me nuts a little bit. But I like the tagless anyway. And then the last one, my TNA shirt, my Mr. Anderson. Pro wrestling is real. People are fake t shirt TNA wrestling. I haven't worn this one in a while. So there you go, guys. There you go. That is my t shirt video. And I'll show you the other Shaytard video or Shaytard shirt that I got. It's the, if you watch the Shaytard videos, it's the black one, the three year anniversary one. So if, I'm sure most of you have seen it already if you watch the Shea, Shea Carl vlogs and Shaytard vlogs. So, anyway, that's all I want to share for now. Uh, eventually, I will do a book review on, well, I'll show you here. I have, you know, the thing about it is, like, I, I've been skimming through a lot of it because I've just been kind of busy. But this is the book that I was talking about. Three Weeks with the Goonies, on location in Astoria, Oregon, by Mick Alderman. Now... What I want to do with this, I might take, I might not just do a book review. I might, I might see if there's a possibility, maybe later on, that we can get this guy, Mick Alderman, and I'm sending a shout out to you, Mick, because I know you and I are friends on Facebook, and I'm going to try to make an announcement right now to see if maybe, possibly, we can do an interview, a Skype interview, maybe, with you and me. <laughs> No, this is a great book. I mean, honestly, I mean, 
I bought it at Astoria, Oregon because I was curious about it. I actually bought it at their local video store uh, at uh, in Astoria, and uh, it was it didn't cost that much. It was thirteen dollars, and you know I wanted to hear the the backstory of the Goonies, and they also have this available on Amazon.com as well. But if we can get this guy on here, Mick Alderman, and he can tell his story, you know, let people know kind of vi visual wise, kind of what uh, is in this book as well as tell us the story of how what it was really like to be you know you know part of the the film even though he wasn't in it but he got to see it get created as far as being in that story Oregon but there's a whole backstory to it as well that only he can tell because I can't because if I did I'd probably ruin, ruin, ruin the whole book for everybody else and I don't want to do that so anyway uh, also I'm going to be getting a couple posters here pretty soon too, but I want to get some frames for it before I actually put them up. Uh, pretty much all that I have to say for right now. So anyway, I want to thank you guys again for, for just uh, showing your support. Whether you're whether you like me or you don't, or you, you, know, you like the videos or you don't. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to have their opinions on what they think is right and what's not. But, you know, the way I look at it, it's like, I know what I want, and I know how to get what I want, you know, as far as this whole YouTube thing goes. And I'm going to try the best. The one thing I will guarantee you, with, with to all you guys, regardless of how much complaining I do, so to speak, I will always try to do the best that I can. And I always will try to, to give the best that I can, in hopes that maybe one day, just one day, the big opportunity that I've been waiting for will come my way. Whether it requires fancy editing, or just a better camera, or a better location, or whatever, I'm pretty much willing to do anything to get to the top. So, and I'm not, I'm not going to give up on, on what I love the most. So, anyway, we'll see you in the next video. We're getting close to 500, and as I promised, once we get to the 500 uh, uh, video, we're going to do a best of. A three-part best of. So that will be coming up in August. That's a way to celebrate my four-year anniversary on YouTube. And to celebrate 500 videos as well. So that's a lot to that's a lot to, to accomplish for so far this year. <laughs> Alright, I'm Frank Slauson. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.